the seven prophetic letters to the churches in the province of Asia in Revelation chapters 2 and 3 are probably the most familiar chapters in the entire book. Uh, we have Jesus now from his ascended place at the right hand of God the Father in heaven speaking to these uh, seven churches. Uh, if you use a red letter Bible, these two chapters are, are all in, in red print as Jesus is addressing uh, these churches. And even a casual reading of these seven letters shows a very similar structure between them. Uh, they begin with an address to uh, each church. Then we have a description of Jesus, uh, largely drawn from John's initial vision in chapter 1. Then we have Jesus uh, commending each church for something positive right. that they're doing. Uh, then there's a reproof for the things that they're not doing. Uh, then there's a, a coming saying that Jesus says, if you do not repent, I'm going to come in judgment. Right, exactly. Uh, then a hearing saying very similar to the, the sayings of Jesus in the parables, the ones have ears, let them hear. And of course, to obey what Jesus is right, saying. Right. And then finally, uh, the promise sayings uh, for those who are victorious uh, in these churches. Uh, so this pattern uh, it runs uh, largely through these seven uh, letters. But there's a couple of exceptions. Uh, we have two churches that receive no uh, words of reproof. Yeah, in Smyrna and in uh, Philadelphia, we don't have anything uh, in, in the reproof. And uh, also persecution in the Smyrna and the Philadelphia letters. So there's the, one of the things I really liked about these letters is that it says it says to the churches. So I've always looked at it like if if you if Jesus writes a letter to every church in a city, and the pros and cons of that church, yeah. and then they pass that everyone in the city gets to read about the other churches. That's kind of what the seven <laughs> yeah. churches are like. They're reading each other's mail. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> reading each other's yeah. mail. Yeah. Uh, there's a very strange uh, change that happens after the first three letters, as we've been talking about. Ephesus, Smyrna, and Pergamum were the three leading cities in the province of Asia. And in this order of the letters, the hearing saying and the promise sayings, they switch with the fourth uh, through the seventh letters. Uh, no scholar that I know of really has figured out why this change takes place. But we also have one letter that has no words of commendation. Yeah, and that's, that's the letter to the Laodiceans. Uh, because most, the reality is when they, when we read the letter that's to, to Laodicea, they're so conformed to their culture. And I think that's where the Lord just gets, you know, the conformity into culture and to the degree that our, our worldview becomes the worldview of, of our, you know, the, the worldview mm -hmm. around us to the degree that we're not, in, we're not mindful of who God is or following who the Lord is. And so I think that's why that that, that is, is uh, related to the, to the Laodicean church. Uh, another interesting feature of these is we see the churches have both external and internal challenges. Yeah. And uh, what were some of the internal challenges, especially with the church here in Ephesus? Well, you know, Paul was very strong on, on following sound doctrine, sound teaching. And also even in First and Second Timothy, there was very strong, you know, Paul teach, uh, you know, telling Timothy mm -hmm. to make sure that he teaches the elders sound doctrine. Uh, and in the Ephesian letter, uh, there's praise to the Ephesians that they, you know, tested the apostles and found that that they were false. So they, uh, in, in my view, that one of the tensions, though, was that they, we could say that they were really had strong orthodoxy, mm -hmm. but it was kind of dead orthodoxy in the sense that they didn't have love. They, that, that was the big issue, is that you've lost your love. And from my perspective, the love that the Lord's talking about is that Ephesus has always been, as we've been talking about, the, 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 the church that had a love for the world, love of planting churches, love of reaching all the people that would come from all over the Mediterranean world and Roman world into this city. And Paul spent two years reaching so many people with the love of God and uh, at this time when this letter was, was given, it seems that they lost their horizontal love. Often this is interpreted as, well, you're losing your love for God. But what I think is the emphasis is that you're losing your love for other people. You're losing your love for the world. Mm -hmm. I think part of that, too, is the spiritual warfare. Maybe they're engaged in here. Uh, the, even though Artemis isn't mentioned in this letter, we know it's a spiritual reality right. still going on in the city. Yeah. 
And uh, there's an interesting group mentioned in this letter called the Nicolaitans. We don't know much about them. Uh, they're also mentioned in the letter to Pergamum, and there they're associated with the followers of Balaam. Uh, so who's the quintessential false prophet in the Old Testament. So they're obviously uh, uh, teaching or preaching something here in the church that uh, Jesus is not happy with. Uh, and uh, we've been talking about accommodation, this whole issue. And uh, one thing I've been considering is perhaps they're saying we can accommodate with the imperial cult. Uh, and uh, we, we can give respect uh, to the emperor without compromising uh, our, our uh, confession of Jesus Christ as Lord. Yeah, and I, I really like the promise given at the end of the letter of Ephesians, the, the, the Ephesus letter. Um, it says, he who has, has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Well. We know that in Revelation, it pulls a lot of imagery out of the yeah. Old Testament. So I'd like to hear your comment when, it's, when it, this, this promise is, I will give you the right to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. You know, this is one of my favorite promises of the, of the seven because it goes clear back to the beginning, to the Garden of Eden. Right. And in the Greek Old Testament, Eden is called paradisos, so paradise. So the original audience would have understood this reference and of course the problem there was Adam and Eve had been told by God not to eat of the fruit. Uh, and if they did, they would be uh, uh, excluded from the garden. And of course they did, they sinned, and uh, they were banned from re-entering and could no longer have access to the tree of life. So what we have here is a reversal uh, through Jesus Christ of the original sin of Adam and Eve and those who are victorious in the churches are going to have that right in the new heaven and new earth yeah. to eat of the tree of life. And I'm sure everyone uh, in the church and definitely mm -hmm. we ourselves, we want to be overcomers. Absolutely. We want to be victorious in our faith. We want to eat of the tree of life and we want to enter into the paradise of yeah, God. Yeah, these promises are ours. That's right.